Fat Morale Noor says her family was one of the last to leave her neighbourhood near Sudan's capital Khartoum because they couldn't afford to leave earlier. When the war reached us, there were bombshells everywhere, killing more than 20 of my neighbours each day, so most people left. She says the paramilitary Rapid Support Forces, or RSF, took over the area and arrested her son Bushra from a PlayStation kiosk he ran for children. He says he was interrogated and caned, accused of supporting Sudan's army and told to join the RSF. A lot of young people registered, but my mom said she'd never forgive any of us if we go and fight. That's why I refused. Fatma says she pleaded with the commanders until he was released, then borrowed money to flee with her entire family. Nyoka Kol says he was shot in the stomach more than two months ago, and his journey's been agony. They all join more than half a million people who fled to South Sudan since the conflict began nearly a year ago, most of them arriving here at a border in Renk County. From the capital, Juba, it's only accessible by air. Our flight took two hours. It's dry for much of the year and prone to flooding when it rains. That's why Nyok spent most of his life working in factories in Khartoum to support his family back home. Now he hopes they'll help him if he can get back. The bus is for people with special needs, including those who are injured, pregnant or breastfeeding. Everyone else is riding in trucks. People here have come from places where there's almost no support. Health services are closed. They're cut off from food. So they're hoping for better luck at their destination, the transit camp in the town of Rek. For months it's been receiving South Sudanese returnees, like Nyok, and now a growing number of Sudanese people are fleeing here too. The UN Refugee Agency built it for about 3,000. Now there are more than five times that. This is one of the somehow forgotten emergency with all what's happening around the globe nowadays. It's not uh, enough what we are receiving. We have a massive number of returnees and refugees who need assistance, but our capacity and funds are very limited. Nyok says he spent the last of his money after he was shot. He says his friends took him to a hospital controlled by the RSF who demanded $1,700 for surgery. I sold all of my furniture and they did the operation. Then they demanded more. I couldn't even afford food and I'm urinating blood. I left and I found everything in my home had been looted, so I came here. This shelter will be his home for the coming days. His life and livelihood in Khartoum are gone. Now he says he just wants to go home. Malcolm Webb, Al Jazeera, Renk County, South Sudan. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to get the latest news from Al Jazeera.